Hey, thanks for coming to visit us. You know, this is our headquarters. We call it our intergalactic headquarters because, well, it's more fun than it sounds big. But what you want to know is, what do we do? And more importantly, how do we help our customers? And, and we have, we kind of think of it as helping a customer from cradle to grave. I hope you understand that in a second. First, let's look at the two types of customers that we do help. One is the plant. If you look at the, the smokestacks, the, the, the factories that are out there, they make trash bags, they make bottles, they make beverages, they bake bread. Inside those plants, there's conveyors and, and bottle fillers and machinery and it spins around and it moves back and forth. Those things that move back and forth, that spin, that rotate, that need to be controlled, well, that's what we do. So everything we do is centered around that type of application. Two types of customers. One's that plant and the other is the, the capital equipment manufacturer, you know, the machine builder that simply sells their machines to those plants. We do five things to help them. One, we're a distributor. Most basic thing we do. We carry inventory, we have drives, PLCs, sensors, terminal blocks, circuit breakers. We distribute those products. Two, when that plant has a machine and it breaks down and they don't have the right people to fix it, they can't figure it out, maybe, maybe they don't have enough people, maybe they don't have techs at all, they call Innovative. Our field service organization can come out and, and help you fix the machine. Now, when they get out there, they're going to find potentially that something's broken. Maybe it's an expensive drive and you want to maybe have a spare, but you don't want to throw that away. You need to get it repaired. Well, send it to us. Third thing we do is electronic repair. Now, a lot of times that machine, as it, as it gets older, it starts to break down more often. The electronics are aging. Maybe it's too slow. You're, you're dealing with old technology. But man, what a great machine it is. I mean, you think about it, like a 1964 Mustang, what a great machine. You don't want to just throw it away, you want to rebuild it. You need a new engine, you need a new interior. Well, that's the fourth thing we do, our systems integration group. Now the applications are centric to PLC and drive control, but what we do is we can go in and gut that old control cabinet, design a new system with all the newest electronics, and we can put it in for you, or you can put it in, doesn't matter. But that's the systems integration group, number four. And number five, well this, this service is really meant for that it's really meant for that, that capital equipment manufacturer. And what they, sometimes they make machines, but they're, they really don't like making the control cabinets or maybe the pneumatic control systems. And so they contract that out to people like us. We'll talk more about the contract manufacturing later, but, but we found that that mainly deals with that capital equipment manufacturer. So, you know, what we, we started off April 2000, we're just a distributor. Had some great lines, I mean, great lines. Parker, Hannafin's, you know, electric actuators and servos, you know, Yaskow AC drives and servos, Omron sensors, PLCs, you know, Wago terminal blocks, PFCs, and, and, and SMC pneumatics. I mean, these are some clutch brands that we have, big brands to help you out with. Distributor, that's how we started. And then we put the other four things with it. Field service, board repair, systems integration, and contract manufacturing. Now, why do we do that? Why do we help with all those different things? Well, that's what the customers needed. We paid attention, we listened. Over time, we may grow other things into who we are as a company. And why would we do that? Why would we pay attention and, and try to grow the services that we're offering our customers? Well, because that's innovative. That's what we do. After all, it's the home of legendary customer service. So let's go back and take a look at the rest of the place. Let's talk about our four company goals. We've, we've had the same four company goals since we started the company. Number one, profitably grow our business, obviously. If we're not profitable, we can't take care of customers, we can't take care of employees, We've gotta have that. Number two, exceed our customers' expectations. That's important. It's important that we not only say it, but we have processes in place to help us actually do it, and we do. One of them's called the game, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. Number three, retain and grow the right people. And, and not just people, but the right people. And if you have the right people, Gosh, you got to keep them. You got to do things to help them become better at their career. You have to help grow the whole person, not just in work, but also in life, if you can. And number four, have fun. Have the right work environment. Have something that you want to look forward going to work in the morning and you want to look forward going home. You, you need to keep those things in balance. And you got to do your part. We have to do our part to create the right work environment if we're going to keep great people. Here's Buzz again. Hey, Buzz. Now, what's, what, 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 are, what are these about? This is our kickoff meetings. We have these once a year. We close the company on Friday. And we can walk, walk here and, and I'll show you these shadow boxes as I'm telling the story. But th these kickoff meetings 
are a personal growth event. What we, what we do here is we take all the employees, we fly them all into one place, and we, they're on these different teams, and each one of these shadow boxes represents a different team. And these are years worth of uh, kickoff meetings here. But the, the idea behind these teams is for them to be completely cross-functional. So there's a customer service person, a salesperson, uh, a field application guy, a field service technician, a board repair tech, all on different teams. And so what that means to you as a customer is simply this. You might be dealing with a, a field application engineer or sales guy in, in Mobile or, or, or in Little Rock, and he needs some help from somebody at a different location, somebody that has some particular expertise. Well, he's starting to get to know the whole company. Now, more so than just team building, which definitely, we've done ropes courses, firewalks, <laughs> glass walks. It's a personal growth event, and, and personal growth is important because remember that number three goal to retain and grow the right people? Well, we not only want to help them be good at work, but we want to help them with their whole life if we can. And, and so we do different things at these personal growth events. We've had uh, seminars on goal setting. I mean, you think about goal setting, right? You go to high school and you learn math and science and, and English, and then you go to college and you learn math and science and more English and, and, and whatever you specialize in. When did you learn to set goals? But you end up at your first job and you know what they ask you? Hey, what are your goals? So, so we try to help with that whole life concept. If we can help these employees become better, if we can help them become better people, bigger people, how can that not help the company grow? See, my analogy is it, it, it's like a horse in a wagon. I think of the company as the wagon. Now, I like the Wells Fargo wagon because it's filled with money, personally, you know. But the horses, those are the employees. And if you want the wagon to go faster, feed the horses. So now, what are these? This is our company values. And in the company, there's five company values. Right? Embrace the team player mentality, promote a positive tone, be dedicated, loyal, and reliable. You think about that. Dedicated, loyal, and reliable. You want a customer to be loyal to taking care of a problem, dedicated to solving that problem for a customer. Demonstrate trustworthiness and take initiative. I mean, aren't those the kind of people you want to deal with, that you want in your company? Of course. These are, the, how these came about, you know, I'll tell you more about that later, but the key is, when we figured out this is who we were, we said, let's write that down so we can hang on to it, because that's worth saving, that's worth recreating, that's worth growing. Let's check out customer service. Some of the, the cubes that you see here are for, for headquarters types positions, you know, IT, uh, the uh, marketing people. Others are specific to the DFW operation, which would be the customer service, the local sales people, field service, and so there's a variety of people. This is IT, and you know, Customer service, time use, customer service, interestingly enough. Cat, customer service. You can go through a whole office, you'll notice that every single nameplate says customer service. Think about this, in, in a lot of companies, Todd Mueller, I mean, he's the operations director of the company. But every day when he goes to work, we make sure he doesn't forget why he's here. That's customer service. Let's check out the warehouse. Now the warehouse, the warehouse is, is uh, in Dallas is a little larger than some of the others because it's what's called a hub. We have a hub in Houston and we have a hub in Dallas. But at any one time, our company carries about $2 million in parts and inventory. And those parts vary from, from uh, Yaskawa AC drives, uh, Parker servos, uh, mechanical actuators, Wago terminal blocks, SMC pneumatics, Omron PLCs, power supplies, sensors. And so what you see here is our Yaskawa inventory. And you'll notice, I mean, we stock through 250 horsepower, 230 and 460 volt here. We stock that in Houston. Uh, Yaskawa drives as an example, gosh, uh, the Yaskawa drives, we carry every Yaskawa drive uh, of the main flavors from 250 horsepower, 230 or 460 volt and down in inventory. It's there for you. You know, 24 seven, you have access to our warehouse. We also have, SM, we have over $350,000 worth of SMC inventory over here. When you need something, you need something quick. If you're gonna be a distributor, if you're gonna play as a distributor, well, you gotta have a warehouse. And you gotta stock it well. You gotta keep track of it. We do cycle counts all the time, continual cycle counts. So, 
Anyway, let's head over to the manufacturing area so you can see that. So take a look. We'll kind of wind through a little bit of the warehouse here. Here's that Omron I was telling you about. You know, half a million dollars worth of Omron is a ton of Omron. When, when you think of Omron, they're the largest sensor manufacturer on the globe. Most people forget that because they make such a great PLC. You know, they even make servos, drives. But gosh, number one largest sensor manufacturer on the planet. Here's some stuff. We have SMC, remember I told you, $300,000 uh, over that in SMC inventory. We have hose, pneumatic hose, pneumatic fittings. We have uh, actuators. What, it's very, very important if something breaks down that you have access to parts. So this isn't what you would typically see in inventory at a high-tech distributor. Well, these are custom cables. What we found is our customers sometimes need, need the products that we have, but they need a little bit of value added to them, you know, cabling, maybe pre-programming, uh, pre-assembly. So that's how the whole contract manufacturing and systems integration group started. So let's go over here and check it out. Now this is our contract manufacturing or manufacturing area of our Dallas operation. We also have an area like this for our Houston hub. Now from a systems integration perspective, the things that we do are really centered around PLC and drive control motion centric systems. When it comes to contract manufacturing, it's a little bit more varied. You can see this is a, this is a um, mechanical frame that holds a machine and we're, we're building that for capital equipment manufacturer. But this type of this aluminum extrusion, like so over here, it can also be used to make hard guards. Real common application for it is safety hard guards. We carry light curtains and, and uh, we carry safety mats. And then to flush that out for customers, we can build safety hard guards with this stuff. We have our, our own uh, cut shop here you know, with milling, precision cutting, and of course assembly. And then as you start looking at the different types of stuff, in addition to those uh, electrical control panels, the 508A control panels, we make pneumatic control panels. And, and they come in varieties of complexity and variety of, of uh, difficulty when you make them. The other things that we do here, if you look at these, there's some larger control cabinets. These are headed into the oil field industry. They have control uh, drives in them. They have HMIs. You know, we have smaller, geez, look at the size of this cooling fan. Hey, size matters, okay? So, anyway. Now we're going back over here to uh, control. The, these are some smaller control panels, stainless steel. We have other control panels that, that'll be maybe even a smaller value added assemblies, like I say, those custom cables. You know, and as a contract manufacturer, we really, we really had to work hard to say, if, if we didn't engineer it, if we're not gonna design it, we're just gonna build it, how do we do it well enough that you'll want to send that business our way? You know, and I, I look at it like pizza. You can buy a pizza from many people, and, and if that pizza shows up at your house and it's delivered cold, well, that's no good. If it's delivered warm, well, that's no extra credit. That's what you expected. So when we deliver a control panel, if we build it right and there's no airs, well, that's what you expected. That's like getting a warm pizza. So what do we do to go beyond that? Well, when you look at our control panels, what you'll notice is every one of our control panels has DIN rail that's cut at a 90 degree angle. Why? Because we have a DIN rail shear and we have a duct shear. So what we want to make sure of is every time you get in that panel, whether it be the duct, the DIN rail, it's a burr free edge, so no one's going to get hurt, it also looks good. And so we really take a lot of pride in how we build the panels from an aesthetic perspective. Because if we're going to do work for you and you look inside of it, that's going to be part of your home, your plant, your machine you want to be able to be proud of that too. And so that's one of the things we really work at. As a matter of fact, we have a shop standards procedure. So as you come to work for us, you have to, you have to go through a series of, in, in, in assembly tech area, you have to go through a series of, of uh, modules that we have in here that help us make sure you understand how to use our tools, how to use a crimp lug. I mean, you think about crimping, when you go to, to crimp even a spade lug, you know, there's a way to crimp it upside down and right side up, which is the right way to use the tool, and why does that matter? And so in about the first 90 days of employment to the, the first six months, each employee has to get through this book, successfully pass those, those tests for each of these modules so that we can, we can make sure they know how to use the different tools to produce the quality that we need to get the panels out correctly.
Let's go look at the uh, field service area. Now over here, this is, I kind of call it the bat cave a little bit because that's cool. I don't know if they like that, but I do. Anyway, the, uh, what they do, when, field service technicians, this, they, they're not here, okay? It's field service technicians. So they're in the field. That's the best, that's the best thing. But a lot of times what happens is, you know, we had a, Owens Corning broke down. It was a Sunday night, it was real late, two in the morning. So technically it's Monday morning, but hey. They called us and they needed something fixed, but the part wasn't around. It, it was not able, you couldn't find it. They brought the drive back. They report, they repaired it at a board level, you know, because we carry different products like this. So that These are boneyard items, is what we call them. We get spare parts from these because this drive was old and we needed something to be able to fix it. Sure enough, we were able to use the equipment that we had in house, repair it right here and have them back up and running early Monday. So that's, this is a little bit about the, the field service guys in the back cave. Let's head back out in the main office. Now here we're back in the, in the main part of the office and what we have here, this is our telemarketing cube. What we do here is we help, uh, we help in the telemarketing pen introduce new products and services to customers, make sure they're aware of our training classes that we have. We had, gosh, I think uh, 36 training classes last year. So, hey guys. Oh, anyway, so let's go back over here to the, uh, to the training room. We want to let you know uh, about the, the training classes that I talked about. A lot of them, when we have them here, we have them in, in Innovative University. So, hey, welcome to the training room. It, it's not just a training room. We call it Innovative University. You know, if you're gonna have that number three, hey Buzz, if you're, if you're gonna have that number three goal to retain and grow the right people, you're gonna have, have you, you need a place to grow them, a training room. This is a significant investment. We had this when, gosh, we only had 30 people. We could all come in here comfortably and train. But we don't just use it for us. Last year, we did 36 customer training classes. This year, we'll do over 60. You know, we, we have our own experts on board that teach most of these training classes, whether it's Jay Anthony teaching, teaching Omron basic a PLC training class or advanced. Uh, we have a basic and advanced pneumatics class for SMC. We've got, you know, servo classes for Yaskawa and for Parker on tuning and sizing. We've got AC drive classes for Yaskawa on basic, advanced, and troubleshooting. You know, these training classes help our people grow. We help, help our people get better, and they also help yours. And, and the reason we feel it's so important is if we're all gonna grow and we gotta get these, this, this next generation, the, these people coming into our industry, we gotta help them understand what it is we do. We gotta help our people help your people. And if we're gonna provide legendary customer service, well, well gosh, we gotta also have a training forum to help you grow your people. So Innovative University isn't just here, it's everywhere our customers need to be trained. We've done on-site training classes, we do hotel-based classes, it's where we have people or locations but not as large a training facility. We've done them in San Antonio, Baton Rouge, Mobile, Memphis, Little Rock, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, San Antonio. Where there's customers that need training, then we'll go to you and help you grow your people. You know, and why, why, why do we take that so seriously? Well, because we're innovative. And that's the home of legendary customer service. Thanks for taking the tour. We'll see you guys next time.